Hi there, right, here's a quick video run through of your BBC system that's going to be coming back to you. So there's your Beeb, all the bits and pieces have all been done inside, etc. Here is your plinth drive with the five and a quarter inch and the GoTech ready to go. You've got two switches on the front of the plinth drive. This one here is 4080 switch for the floppy. This one here would have been a 4080 switch for this drive, but obviously we changed that around. A GoTek doesn't have a 4080 switch. So we've got a switch here which either points to the right or to the left. That selects whichever one is drive zero. So it's pointing towards the five and a quarter. So this is drive zero and that's drive one. If we flick it that way, that becomes drive zero and that becomes drive one. That allows you to boot up from either disk. So You've got all your bits and pieces here. I'll give you a couple of floppy disks so you can test the system with it. You've got the speech system, user guide, ADT guide, basic editor, disk filing system, and Xmon as well. You've got some instruction leaflets here for the Raspberry Pi CoPro. A leaflet on the floppy drive, and just a warning about using moldy disks, but have a read through of that. And the leaflet on the GoTech USB emulator. So what we'll do is we'll pop that onto the screen and we'll give it a whiz. First off, let's pop something into the GoTech. So we can see on that, you get this USB stick with it and it's got loads of stuff and bits and pieces on. Let's do the first test, which is always a popular one. Right, so that's the basic Model B version of Elite running. Now what we're going to do is show you what we've got fitted to the back of the machine. Hopefully the camera is going to show you two switches here, one, two. This one here is for the non-volatile sideways RAM. I'll go through that in a second. This one here is for the second processor. So if we flick that down, let's now turn the second processor on. And now do a control break. You see that light at the top has changed to Acorn Tube 6502. And if I now boot up Elite, it's going to come up with a 6502 second processor version. And we load that in. And that's now the co processor version, and that's running at a seriously faster speed than a usual co-pro would run now in this co-processor obviously the advantage of it is you've got other co-pro cores so while we've got the co-processor on one thing I have put in here if we do star ROMs we'll see what you got you've got your DFS ADT graphics extension ROM which after our discussions is now disabled by default so you have to type star GXR in order to enable it. Your basic Xmon 2 combi ROM which is part of the ADFS auto load along with 2 basic editor and I've also put in Z80 basic here which means at the moment it's got 6502 basic if we enable the Z80 core which is FX oh, remember the commands it 151 comma 230 comma 4 z80 core and it boots straight into basic so we've got the um, all your z80 assembler is on there as well which is a really good a really cool function if you like to do Z80 assembly you can do it exactly in BBC basic for the Z80 just as if you would doing it 6502 if I load up the DOS core 30,8 we're also going to need to load in But we're also going to need to load in the ADFS. So we're going to need Y ADFS here, which is the standard version of ADFS. Now, what we want to do here, let's escape that first of all, because we need to set up. We can't load the DOS off Elite. So in here, we have the various sets of folders which have the, the boot up software for the CoPros, 
some of the co pros. It's 32016 software, that's the 80286 and the Z80. We just load up the 80286 one here. So we've got some shareware disks on here, a blank disk, and the Master 512 install one, which is the MASIC, which is the first disk. So if we now control break that, it should start to load up DOS. And there we have it. What I'm going to do is change it to Master 512 Install Disk 2. If we then DIR that, that's the disk with Gem on. So if I start Gem, a Gem, as far as I'm aware, you need to use a mouse to go with that. You can find those on eBay. I don't have any spare ones, unfortunately, at the moment that line running up the screen is simply the interaction of my camera with this cub monitor watching it in real there's absolutely none of that flashing whatsoever so just bear that in mind some cameras don't like don't like CRT monitors but there we go so that's the gem system loaded and I can't do anything else with it because we need to pretty sure that we need to use a mouse. I don't think it is the keyboard shortcuts. If someone knows different, then please let me know. So what we'll do is we'll come out of that. We'll turn the coprocessor off. I'm gonna clear that ADFS. And the last thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna check the floppy disks here. So if we pop a floppy disk in, done a couple of discs with games on so it's set as drive 0 and drive 1 so if I do star dot 1 it will then load up a floppy disk if I swap that over star dot 0 now also gives me the floppy disk That's that floppy disk verifying. I'll just let that run through there and then we'll load a game off it. Again, that flashing that I can see on the screen is just the way the camera is interacting with the cub. Right, if I say load up a version of Snapper. Right, we won't play that through the whole way. Right, and there we go. I think that's everything. If there's anything else you need to know, obviously you can message me at the time. But and I think I've got everything there. Obviously, you'll let me know if I've missed anything off. And I will speak to you soon. Thanks for watching.